Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Knowing what vocabulary to learn for your IELTS exam will make your preparation easier, save you a huge amount of time and help you to get the results you want. In this video, I show you the top six types of vocabulary to focus on. So just how important is vocabulary? Well, vocabulary makes up 25% of your mark for the writing and speaking parts of the exam. And knowing a broad range of words is also essential for scoring well in the listening and reading tests. However, vocabulary is far more important than this. It is, in fact, the most important skill area you need to master when learning English. Why? Because vocabulary is what spoken and written language is. That's all it is. Here's what I mean. Spoken and written language is words used in a structured way to communicate meaning. When you study a language, you do three things. You learn some words. You learn a few rules as to how to fit the words together and you learn how to change their form according to these rules. The better you get at this, the more fluent you become, but it's all about the words. The average native English speaker is estimated to have a vocabulary of 20,000 to 30,000 words. You're unlikely to learn that much language before taking your exam, nor do you need to. But the challenge for students is knowing which types of words to focus on so that you build up a functional, practical vocabulary that will enable you to answer the sorts of questions you'll be asked. Here are the first four types of vocabulary I recommend that all my students concentrate on. Common words, versatile words, topic related vocabulary and chunks of language. Now for a little bit about each of them. Number one, common words. First, you'll need to learn key words that are part of everyday conversation and written text such as found in newspapers and magazines. This is where most English learners start. This will be the vocabulary that you hear and see most regularly as you study English. You'll come across it as you do the following things. Talk and listen to English speakers or advanced learners. Listen to TV, films, radio, YouTube videos and podcasts and read popular texts such as magazine articles. You need to be doing these sorts of activities every day and recording new vocabulary. I give detailed instructions on how to learn IELTS vocabulary on the website. I put the link in the notes below this video. There's also a related video on my YouTube channel. Please don't miss this information, as it's almost as important to understand how to learn vocabulary as it is knowing what to learn. Second, learn versatile words. Versatile means to be adaptable to many different situations. With tens of thousands of possible words to choose from, it makes sense to focus on those that you can use in as many different situations and contexts as possible. You'll get better at recognising these the more you work in IELTS practice questions. As you see the new vocabulary, think, would that have been useful for answering other questions I've seen? If the answer is yes, record the word or phrase and learn it properly. I explain what I mean by properly on the How to Learn IELTS vocabulary page and video I've just mentioned. Number three is topic related vocabulary. Whilst it's only in part one of the speaking test that there are common topics, there are many subjects that appear regularly in the IELTS exam. You can't know what will come up in your test, but it's still a good idea to learn vocabulary related to popular subjects, for example, health and fitness, education, technology, the environment and so on. These types of common subject areas could come up in any part of the IELTS exam. You might be asked to talk or write about them, or they could be the focus of reading or writing activities. To make learning topic vocabulary simple for you, 
I created lists of common words and phrases for many different topics. You'll find them all on the website, along with practice questions and sample answers. These resources are intended to make it quick and easy for you to practice using the vocabulary, and it will help you to learn it. They'll save you time researching the topics and having to look up the meaning of unfamiliar words and phrases. However, these vocabulary lists are not intended for you to go away and try to memorise all the different words and phrases. That's not what learning IELTS vocabulary is all about. Focus on the words and phrases you find most useful and are most comfortable using. Add them to your vocabulary notebook and learn them fully but don't waste your time trying to memorise them all. Our fourth type of vocabulary is chunks of language. English, in common with most other languages, contains a lot of idiomatic language. Idiomatic language is groups of words, or chunks of language, that have a different meaning when used together to the meaning of each separate word. For example, to catch up with, which means to talk or meet up with someone you've not seen for a period of time and find out what they've been doing. An answer to a typical part one speaking question might be, I don't have much time to go out during the week, but I love catching up with my friends at weekends. The meaning of this phrase is very different to the meaning of any of the individual words it contains. Another example is the phrase, off the top of my head, which means to say something without careful thought or investigation. Here's a sample answer where the candidate is answering a speaking question about parks in their city. I'm not sure how many parks and public gardens there are in London, but off the top of my head, I'd say about 30. The only way to add this type of language to your vocabulary and be able to use it correctly is to learn it as a whole, as a chunk of language. You'll find that my topic vocabulary lists contain a lot of idiomatic phrases because this is the vocabulary you're least likely to know already but will be some of the most useful to you. In addition to common words, versatile words, topic related vocabulary and chunks of language, there are also two specific types of words that are very important to learn. These are synonyms and antonyms. A synonym is a word that means exactly or nearly the same as a given word. For example, some synonyms of the word true are genuine, accurate, factual and correct. An antonym is a word that means the opposite of a given word. For example, some antonyms of the word energised are tired, exhausted, drained and fatigued. Why are they so important? They're extremely useful because a key skill you need to learn in order to do well in the IELTS exam, especially in the speaking test, is paraphrasing. To paraphrase is to say exactly the same thing but using different words. For example, nearly all the guests who went to the event fell ill with food poisoning the following day. The majority of guests who attended the event went down with food poisoning the next day. These two sentences say exactly the same thing but using different words. So it's vital to know a few synonyms of common words and a couple of antonyms will also be useful. A key characteristic of a low level English learner is someone who uses the same vocabulary over and over again. Knowing some common synonyms and antonyms will help you to avoid this and impress the examiner. It will show them that you have a versatile command of the English language in all four skill areas, speaking, writing, reading and listening. Before we come to the end of this video, there are a couple more things it's important for you to know about vocabulary for IELTS. First, you don't need a vocabulary of high level, complex, technical or academic words. What you do need is the right words for talking in everyday language 
about a range of topics and the ability to use them appropriately and correctly. Whilst you do need to know the right vocabulary to answer questions on a particular topic, you certainly don't need to know every word related to that subject. A carefully selected bank of key words and phrases would be enough to answer most questions in your IELTS exam. I hope that you now have a much clearer idea as to what vocabulary to focus on. Do check out the links I've put in the notes below this video as there's lots more help for you on the website. I look forward to seeing you there.